Making and flying kites is an art form that originated in Asia ages ago. But with rapid urbanization and modernization of Asian societies, there is concern that this tradition may die out as young people get hooked into computer games and other forms of electronic entertainment. But in recent years, governments and kite flying enthusiasts across Asia have begun to make concerted efforts to keep this centuries old tradition alive. Kite festivals are being organized and it is becoming increasingly popular with both young and old. Normally the kite uh, flight by the farmers after the harvest thing the uh, paddy then uh, no, uh, then the flying the kite uh, through the past time and uh, they make some competition among the village among the town and city to make the kite more excitement, excitement to play Kites can take months to design and another few months to perfect. Bright colored patterns and intricate shapes are cut out of paper to build up the body of the kite. The finishing touches consist of adding the likes of long ribbons. When they are attached to the kites, some sporting wingspans wider than the largest birds of prey, the sight is fantastic. Today, there are also many other modern designs. up here is a 25 cell box kite it's a rhombus box and uh, what I do is the way it flies in the sky it's got bottom parts got dihedrals and it has lots of tails so with the strong winds the tail sort of helps to stabilize it but I like to make it move in the sky so as it moves in the sky it creates optical illusions wow bulan wow jala budi wow kuching generations of people in Asia have been making kites and for many it is still a livelihood There is a kite tradition in India and uh, there are so many members, it is also a job. Thousands of people are earning their livelihood through kites making. Thousands of people. Somebody is uh, cutting it, somebody is uh, making bamboos, somebody is pasting it and somebody having their uh, specially thread like called manja. They make it through the aid of glass and uh, some glue and chemicals then uh, that is used for fighting the uh, kites. Though kite flying is believed to have originated in China, it is in Indonesia and Malaysia that kites became a national symbol, with even the Malaysian Airlines adopting it as their logo. It is considered to be one of their ancient arts. In order to revive the kite flying tradition, especially among the younger generations, the Malaysian government is encouraging the growth of kite flying associations and have sponsored many new kite festivals. This is one of them, held every year in Pasir Gudang, in the southern state of Johor. Even the Sultan of the state graced the occasion to declare open the festival. The Pasir Gudang Kite Festival is held in February each year, just before the onslaught of the hot monsoon season. Thousands of people, both young and old, attend this weekend festival. The kites flown here reflects the diversity of designs of modern kites, some of which takes real effort to get it off the ground.
they have a hundreds of the layers of the card. Then at the end of the card, they have a dragon. You can see that there's a dragon, dragon head. So it be like dragon heads. Then right now the wind is not so strong. Then we try to pull out everything on the air. This home produce this called egg. Egg. We make this noise for breakfast. Ribbon. We try to win. We will be make noise loudly. In Thailand, we we we, we rest this kai uh, right here. This loudest kai. Kite festivals like this not only attract locals but also many from overseas. Some even from faraway lands. They bring along many different designs of kites and flying techniques. There's a couple of factors that go into it. First of all, it must be visually appealing. So we, we try and make something that is attractive to the crowd. But it also has to fly, so there's another effect that we have to make sure that um, it also flies. So two things, one it must look like something and two it must fly. Well we, we need the wind of course, but we make the kite very light. We make it without structure, it's a soft kite so it inflates with the wind. Um, the air inside it forces it into the shape that will fly and uh, then physics does the rest. We create lift and lift picks the kite up, so easy. Okay, I was flying two-line kite. It can move to the left, it can move to the, to the right, depending on how you do wrist movement. So if you are familiar with how it moves, it flies, you can make it go left, go right, go up, down, make it steady. And you can do stunts. The kite is very safe to play among the children in the crowd because it's got no sticks. It's just a soft uh, fabric material and uh, the, the kids want to touch it. The kids, uh, uh, I, I drop it among the kids' uh, crowd and uh, they love it. And they, they were probably wondering how it flies. When we fly the kites, to control and steer the kite, we have the flying line attached here. And if we pull from the flying line on this side, the kite turns in this direction. If we pull on the flying line on this side, the kite turns in this direction. If you want the kite to fly straight, we pull on both lines, this line and this line, at the same time the kite flies straight. If we want it to turn left, we pull turn left, Turn right and both lines by straight. Very simple. It's a circle kite. You you have a lot of triangle, and you made a junction with a fiber graphic associate all the triangle. So you have a, a way inside for the wind. Actually, the kite is called a Tai Chi kite. As you can see, the symbol is um, is the yin yang symbol. The, this is a part lion and a part dragon. So if you look look at it, is um, you have to look at the symbol and you will see the design. This is very fantastic here. Here it is, it is the due to the assistance of government. 
it has a, a festival year, but uh, somewhere in India, only few governments take it as a festival and they have expenditure over it. Fighter kite is one of the uh, uh, very difficult kite to fly now. Uh, it, uh, this is the very, you know, you need experience and practice. Without practice, you cannot fly. These kites, you see, big, big kites are all you can fly easily. Even noise person can fly with the wind. But it needs the uh, skill very well. Plus practice. If you don't have practice, you can uh, you, uh, you can tear your kite. There's going to be a rakaku battle. Rakaku is uh, six sides. All these kites have six sides. Kite was uh, probably first built in, I think, Shirone, Japan, three, four hundred years ago. The tradition today is that there should be a rakaku fight at kite festivals, usually three rounds. The object is for the kite that is last cut down to be the winner. So if there are 12 kites, first kite down gets no points. Second kite down maybe wins one point. Uh, the third kite down maybe wins uh, two points. And the last kite will win the maximum number of kites, and that kite is the winner. Usually, there are three rounds. I don't know how many there are going to be today, but I can assure you it's going to be very exciting and great fun. And can I tell you this, when you're looking at Rokaku battle, of course you want to look up at the sky and see what kite is being cut down. You've also got to look at the ground because there'll be a lot of dirty work going on the ground. People will be winding their kite lines around the bodies and the feet of other people to try and bring them down. And they will do any dirty trick okay. to win. So watch out. of knots over here. Have you seen them? I've never seen anything like it. I, the re official results are not out and until the official results are announced it's very dangerous of me but I think that uh, Bali did pretty well. Kites could not only fight each other, they could also dance to music with each other. Normally we do formation flying in the sky, formation doing a lot of a uh, lot of uh, execution at the same time. It's a ballet, it's a ballet meaning you 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 execute your movement at the same time, everybody move at the same time. So so according to the music that we play, so this is what we call ballet as as team uh, flying. Because we are we are familiar with this uh, figure, we, we call it figure. So there are a lot of figure, the geometrical figure. We do round, we do square, we do hexagon, pentagon, everything. So we do a, a, a snap stall and we do a bit of tricks, you know, moving around, moving the kite around together with the music. It's sort of like putting the kite dancing on the sky. Indonesia also holds many kite festivals all over the vast archipelago. This is one such festival held each year in the capital, Jakarta. The kites from here reflect the rich tradition of Indonesian kite making. One thing that the important thing why we make the kite festival in Indonesia because we find uh, we found a kite from leaf because we know the story of the kite is from China. But when we have the leaf kite from Indonesia and then now all of the world start asking is it from China or from Indonesia? In this festival, we have 14 provinces from Indonesia and then we have 8 countries from uh, out of Indonesia. 
and they come, they fly a kite. We have an uh, exhibition for the two dimension and three dimension. We have a uh, winner. It's just for the national kite. The kite makers are now preparing for the judging panel to inspect their kites. The winner judge is they account from the earth. First, when the kite didn't fly and we look the kite. Is it uh, how the kite maker make kite? Is it good or is it bad? And then when it fly, it fly good and the color. The color in the sky, it's good or not. Kite people, it's popular for the fighting. Kite. I think the fighting kite is more popular. But now I think it's uh, everybody thinking the kite is for the children. But when we make the kite festival, now many young people coming and looking and then they're thinking to fly a kite. To encourage children to continue the tradition of kite flying, during the festival, workshops are organized to teach them the art of simple kite making. In India, kite flying is still an integral part of the living culture. Every year on January 14th in Gujarat state, it is such a popular festival that even the state government has declared the day a public holiday. In India, every children and ladies and gents uh, go to the top and kite, kite fighting in India on the top. Yeah, there is a, there are a, so many types of additional kite in India. The children make kite themselves and fly. This festival is known as Uttarayan. It is also known as Makar Sankranti across India. It marks the movement of the sun into the northern hemisphere. It is a belief that the gods, who are believed to have slumbered for six months, are now awake and the portals of heaven are thrown open. It is a major festival of thanksgiving and merrymaking in Gujarat, where flying kites forms a major part of the celebrations. Kite festival in India and special in Gujarat is a tradition of uh, kite festival. Uh, it's a, a family tradition and festival in India. Since uh, uh, heritage of uh, Ahmedabad Kite Festival and Ahmedabad Traditional Kite Festival is uh, more than 100 years old. Sun uh, goes into Makar Rasi. It's called Makar Sakranti. The sun, it's an astrology sign. Sun goes to in Makar Rasi. That's called it's a Makar Sakranti. People are uh, goes to temple and uh, pray for that. 
they are giving a donation the tradition of uh, kite festival in Ahmedabad especially. And in this uh, festival, uh, people are come to rooftop and fly kite. And it's a uh, to, uh, family come together and fly kite. It's a team building process also. And uh, they are uh, eating some uh, traditional umdia, chikki, and uh, this uh, food item. And uh, all family uh, come together fly kite. It means uh, our tradition. Here at the heart of Ahmedabad city is Patang Bazaar, which is kept open 24 hours a day during Uttarayan week. Even at this late hour of night, traders are doing brisk business. The preparation for the festival includes this act of making spool of manja which is adding a red base to the kite strings coated with a mixture of glue and glass to be as sharp as possible for cutting the strings of rival kites. Throughout the day, people young and old, men and women, fly kites from everywhere, in parks, playgrounds and rooftops even from rooftops of slums like this. Kite fighting is a very popular sport like uh, traditional sport, our traditional sport in Ahmedabad. They are uh, cut the kite and they, uh, there are, uh, you see this, uh, this is more than, uh, it's a uh, more than one crore rupees business in India and now it's a very popular. The rooftops are the most popular locations for flying kites from. It is also a social location where friends, relatives and families gather for a day-long picnic. This is the grandma of the family. She says that all of her children and grandchildren have gathered here and she will feed them with all the traditional foods like ladu, puri, jalebi. My mother-in-law, I am very happy. Some uh, any things of uh, enjoy my two childs. <laughs> Each year in January, Ahmedabad is also home to a world-famous international kite festival held to coincide with the Uttarayan festivities. It has been held each year since 1989 on the banks of the Sabarmati River. Vietnam.
We are now coming towards the most exciting part of the festival, the night flying of kites. This festival is not only for the young people, from little uh, children and from the old age people also they enjoy this festival. Uh, just to see that my father-in-law and my mother-in-law, they are also about 75 years age, they also enjoy this festival. In India, most festivals interact with the Hindu religion and this kite festival is no exception. At this hundred-year-old shrine, at the home of a kite enthusiast, even the gods are being invited to partake in the festivities. This is the temple of a hundred years above, and my father-in-law and his father and his father has done this temple. And we all are doing, uh, every day we are uh, doing this year prayer. Yesterday, within 12 or uh, night, at 12 o'clock, we put all the kites uh, to God. Uh, and this is... Small. Small firki. In Gujarati, we call it firki. And this is the kite small, so the god can fly these kites. This is called a tukal, and the candle lit at the bottom allows this kite to lift up into the night sky. It makes a great sight at night in the city sky of Ahmedabad. <laughs> The festival is not yet finished. These rooftop dance parties will carry on until the early hours of the morning. In this ultra-modern city-state of Singapore, one would imagine that modernization and electronic entertainment would have killed any chance of the Asian kite-flying tradition surviving. That has been proved wrong here. At this kite festival, sponsored by the government link National Trade Union Congress, it shows that there is still space within the concrete jungle to fly kites. And Asians, young and old, still loves to fly a kite. What are you doing, ma'am? Like this? Oh, oh, oh. Wow. Okay, mine fly. Kite okay, flying in Singapore is picking up since around 2008 to 2009. Yeah, it, it is very popular now. Uh, many parks in Singapore, we do have a lot of flyers flying around. To overcome these teething problems of getting back to an age-old tradition, Singaporeans, both young and old, are being taught the fundamentals of making a traditional now, kite. What we have here is uh, usually this uh, kite festival where everybody comes up to fly. You know, there's not really a competition. Anymore. As Asia modernized, these pictures are perhaps reflective of the fact that kite flying as a traditional pastime and even as a competitive sport will survive and perhaps thrive as it adds color, spirit and diversity to your cultural life. So go fly a kite!